This shows a schematic representation of the two nozzles. The right-hand nozzle is fixed, while the left-hand one can be moved horizontally and vertically. Note that the inner facing walls of the nozzles are vertical, so that they can be brought into close contact. As the film starts, the nozzles are separated by 12 millimeters and are viewed edge-on using a shadow graph system. The pressure ratio in the movable nozzle is now increased from zero to a value of 3.4. When the jet becomes supersonic, the well-known cell structure appears. The vertical cell dimension enlarges as the pressure ratio increases. Note the acoustic waves which are emitted on alternate sides from a position downstream from the nozzle. At a pressure ratio of 3.4, this acoustic source has a frequency of about 20 kilohertz and is located in the fourth cell. It is interaction of these waves with the jet at the tip of the nozzle which forms part of the acoustic feedback system which sustains the source. The fixed jet now has its pressure ratio increased. Note the way the acoustic waves from the left-hand jet interact with the other jet at the nozzle tip. Vortices are formed which then pass downstream. When the pressure ratio of the jets are equal, acoustic waves from both jets can be seen. At this particular pressure ratio and separation, the jets oscillate in antiphase. This is best observed by watching the top part of the jets in the region near their acoustic sources. The movable jet is now placed in different positions. As the jets approach, they continue to interact acoustically and pass through positions in which they operate in phase or in antiphase. These positions are determined by the distances from the acoustic sources to the nozzle tips. The nozzle motion can be stopped, as it has been here, to measure and study such positions. The jets interact aerodynamically, initially downstream. As they approach more closely, the cell structures begin to merge. This is accompanied by a frequency drop to a value close to that of a single nozzle of twice the width. The nozzles are now moved apart and pass through various positions of being in phase or in antiphase. In between these positions, the feedback mechanisms do not work to sustain the oscillation. The jets are now in an in-phase position. The separation is about 19 millimeters. At this position, the sensitivity of the shadow graph system is decreased. The acoustic waves are no longer visible the cell structure is much clearer and less distorted. The movable jet is now slowly moved towards the fixed one. The positions of in-phase and anti-phase motion of the jets are clearly seen.
the cell structures merge. With this arrangement of the shadow graph sensitivity, the MAC lines are clearly visible. It is from pictures such as this that the pattern and shapes of the MAC lines can be analyzed in detail. The movable nozzle, which is less than a millimeter from the fixed one, is now moved in the vertical direction. Pauses are made at various points. Note the changing pattern of the cells and the way the MAC lines cross the shear layers between the jets. Records such as these give useful information on the shock structure in the jets. In separate experiments, frequency spectra were taken for all of these interaction situations. In the final part of this film, the sensitivity of the shadow graph has been increased so that the acoustic waves are again visible. The nozzles are now eight millimeters apart and the movable nozzle is raised vertically. It is interesting to watch the stability of the right-hand jet. There are clearly positions where the oscillations are stable, either in phase or in antiphase. At other places, the jets are disturbed and the acoustic waves are not produced in a regular manner. <laughs>